This program is going to take a look at the concept of yield. Yield can be expressed many ways. First, we have our theoretical yield, that which is the amount that's predicted using stoichiometric calculations based on the amount of reactants present. We also have our experimental yield, that which is actually obtained through the course of an experiment. And then we have percentage yield, which is a way of comparing the two yields with each other. To best understand these, let's take a look at an actual example. The example I'm going to consider is a student heating some baking soda in a test tube. The reaction is supposed to be as follows. Sodium bicarbonate upon heat decomposes and breaks down into sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water, or steam in this case because of the higher temperature. Here's the data that they recorded. The mass of baking soda that was added was 1.21, and the mass after the experiment, which the student assumes to be the sodium carbonate, 1.04 grams. Let's take a look at <clears throat> what one of these numbers now represents. This value here is the actual amount obtained in my experiment, so I can use this for my experimental yield. Now, using the 1.21 grams a sodium bicarbonate, I can use the stoichiometry in this equation to determine what the theoretical yield is. But first I need to balance the equation. One sodium on this side, two on this side. I'm going to fix that right away by putting a two here. Two hydrogens there, two hydrogens over here in the water. There's a carbon here, in fact two carbons because of the two in front. And I have a carbon present here and a carbon present here. And finally six oxygens. And there's three present here, two in the carbon dioxide, and one. So we now have reached a balanced situation. So you might recall the next step is to take this information and convert that into moles. We do that by dividing by the molar mass of our chemical, which is 84.01 grams per mole. Upon the division, we arrive at 0 0.0144 moles of sodium bicarbonate. Now we'll employ the ratio that's in the equation, a 2 in front of the sodium carbonate and essentially a 1 in front of that material, a 2 to 1 ratio, so I have to divide this by 2. And that's my number of moles and now to convert this back into grams I have to multiply by the molar mass of this chemical which is 105.99 and that gives me 0 0.763 grams so this number here this represents what theory says I should get. Now to calculate now what the percentage yield is in my experiment, let's put the experimental yield on top, which is uh, 1.04 grams. Theory says that I should get uh, 0 0.763 grams, multiply that result by 100, and we finish up with 136 percent. Now, that should raise a question mark. How can you get more than is theoretically possible? This would indicate that the substance that remains in the test tube at the end of the experiment mustn't just be sodium carbonate. There must be some other materials in there. Anytime you're over 100 percent, you've got some impurities that are present. Well, let's take a little bit closer look at this experiment, look at some sources of error as to why these two yields don't quite match up with each other. The first thing you might want to consider is that the reaction might not be complete. 
In this case, heating the substance for only one minute, perhaps I hadn't converted all of the sodium bicarbonate. And as a result, at the end of the experiment, I had a mixture of these two chemicals, and that could allow for me to have some impurities and get me over the 100% that I actually got in this experiment. Well, how can you tell when a reaction is complete? One of the best ways is to heat the chemical a second time and reweigh it, and repeat it maybe even a third time and reweigh it. What you're looking for is after the reweighing, the masses have not changed. That would be a good indication the experiment is finished. Other potential things that could cause a difference in your theoretical and your experimental is poor separation methods. Perhaps the filter paper pores were too large and allowed some of the material to escape. Or upon heating to drive off water, some chemical was actually driven off, spat out of the chemical upon heating. Transfer errors. Every time you introduce a new material that comes in contact with your reactants, some residual material will remain on that glassware or that stir rod or that thermometer, thereby actually reducing the amount of reactants that are present and reducing your yield. You can also have unwanted side reactions. Other chemicals that are present in air, nitrogen gas perhaps, could be reacting with some of your substances. Water vapor that's present could be reacting. This is particularly in the case of metals. Many metals, when essentially in the pure form, will rapidly oxidize or react with water vapor. So as a result, you have to try to minimize these unwanted reactions by using conditions that don't cause these to happen. Anyway, that's just an idea of what yield is about and how it can affect your experiment. In our next program, we'll take a look at gases, and in particular, the gas laws.